So today we are going to continue with uh, this topic about inventory control subject to uh, deterministic or fixed or known uh, demand. Um, also uh, remember assignment two it should be delivered uh, at least by tomorrow morning so I should have it uh, when I come to job to tomorrow. So the front room is open until uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning but you can also deliver by email or eventually by a paper copy which you can uh, deliver to me. Uh, so first today short repetition from uh, what we did last week. Go very fast through this. And we presented what we call the simple EOQ model, or the economic order quantity model, uh, also called the Wilson's formula, sometimes denoted as a QW, uh, and also sometimes called Harris's formula. Harris was the one who first developed this model, and uh, Wilson was the one who started to use it uh, uh, extensively in the 1930s. Uh, and this is the simple model for uh, finding an optimal order size according to given uh, relevant costs, which are defined to be first the holding cost and then the ordering cost, cost of placing orders and the cost of storing inventory. And also sometimes we uh, will have to include what we call the purchase cost, the cost of buying the uh, the annual or, or the demand for a certain uh, time period. Um, in the simple case this is a constant because the cost will be the same independent if you are ordering every week or ordering once a year. Uh, but when we get to the topic about uh, uh, about discounts when the price is uh, uh, dependent on the size uh, on the order size then the purchase cost will also be a relevant cost, which is used to find the optimal order size. Uh, but first, repeat, let's repeat something uh, from last week about the simple EOQ model. Uh, and here we have the assumptions given. You have a fixed demand, which is known to be as, the, as this Greek letter uh, lambda, units per unit time, usually given in a certain uh, demand per year. Uh, we are also, uh, one assumption is that the, the shortages are not allowed, so we are planning with a delivery exactly when we reach zero inventory. And here in this case, when we have a fixed unknown uh, demand, this is quite easy to, to find out when the inventory level will reach zero. Uh, the orders are received uh, instantaneously, but this will be uh, relaxed later, but in the uh, simple EOQ model we can assume that. Also the order quantity is fixed at Q, this is then the variable per cycle, and this can be proven to be the optimal. So this is the case uh, of this simple EOQ model to determine the size of the Q, the order size, how many items should we order each time we are placing an order. And then we have the cost structure, which uh, consists of the fixed and marginal order cost, the K, which is the cost of placing one order independent of the size, and also the cost of uh, the variable cost, which is dependent on the number of items. Uh, and the second part of the cost structure here, the holding cost, which is said to be H, this is the, the variable uh, or the, the parameter here, uh, per unit held per unit time. So if you're storing one unit of this item, it will cost you a certain amount of money, given as the H parameter. Uh, we also saw this figure, which uh, will uh, show the inventory level according to the time. So here, when we have a fixed uh, or uh, we have decided about a value of Q, how many items we should uh, order, then we will 
have a maximum level of inventory, which is equal to this Q value, and then we will have a fixed demand, where the slope is given to be minus uh, lambda, or minus the demand rate. And when you reach zero inventory, you will get a new order of the same size, the Q. And so you will have several cycles. Uh, and the T, the capital T here, is uh, said to be the cycle time. How much time, one cycle, how much time will it go between one order and the next order? Uh, this is the EOQ formula, which is uh, proven to be optimal. I will not go through the proof again. I showed it last week. But the Q value, the order size, in this simplified uh, case, uh, will be two times the order cost, where K is the one-time order cost, the cost of placing one order, multiplied by the annual demand and divided by the holding cost. And, of course, take the square root here to find the exact value of the Q. <coughs> also, we can show a short analyze here that Q is increasing with the order cost and the annual demand. So if any of these parameters will increase, then the order size should also increase. And similar, if one of them will decrease, then the optimal order size will also decrease. Uh, and when we look at the holding cost, this will be in the denominator here. And then the order size Q will increase if this value decreases. And the opposite, if this value will increase, then the, the order size will, will decrease. And then the Q will change as the square root of these quantities. Uh, also, Q is independent of the proportional order cost, uh, except that it will relate to the value of H, which is said to be, uh, or defined to be, the I, which is called the internal interest rate, given in as a percentage of the value, multiplied by the C, the value of the product, or the, the, uh, the amount of money we we pay to our vendor to, to buy one item of, of the product. And the cost of storing inventory, the H parameter, will be the product of the interest rate and the value of this particular item. Interest rate, given uh, as a percentage of the value, usually around 10, 15, 20, 25 percent in that area. And it's usually given as uh, uh, a percentage or an interest rate per year. Sometimes it's given uh, in another uh, uh, for, for another time period. What is important is that when you have a demand given as an annual demand, you also need to have the holding cost given as the annual holding cost. Or similar, if you have a monthly demand, you should have a monthly holding cost. The time periods should be the same, otherwise you will get the wrong answer, of course. This is quite important to, to be aware of. <coughs> uh, here is a graph of the two relevant uh, cost uh, elements here, and also the G value, which is the cost function. Um, the holding cost is this curve hyperbolic, k multiplied by lambda divided by q, which is the parameter. So when q will increase, then the order cost will decrease. Uh, quite logical. Uh, if you are ordering more items each time, then you don't have to place that many orders, and the ordering cost will be smaller. If you are ordering only a small amount of uh, 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 of item, small number of items, then you have to order more frequent and then the ordering cost will be higher. And similar, the holding cost, given as the average size of the stock, Q divided by 2 and multiplied by H, the holding cost per item, is a linear function looking like this. And then, of course, if you are ordering 
many items each time you will have a larger stock and you will have larger cost for keeping the stock and the total function the trc or the total relevant cost function here denoted as the g function will be the sum of these two different cost elements and as we can see here the minimum num uh, the minimum value here the uh, the minimum point of the cost curve will be at the point where the ordering cost and the holding cost are exactly equal at this point when at the intersection of these two cost fun functions, you will have the minimum po point of this curve, which is the, the total cost, um, cost function for uh, including this uh, hauling cost and uh, the ordering cost. <coughs> uh, we can also try to look at, the, at this um, graph and uh, say a few words about what we call the sensitivity or the uh, also the robustness of this formula which is actually why this uh, eoq formula are so extensively used because it's uh, what we call quite robust it's rather insensitive for small variations of the variables uh, if uh, well the, the q value is uh, quite easy to find by using this formula if you have the exact value of all the parameters. But to estimate the k parameter, how, the, uh, how much one order will cost, is not always, always that easy. And then you sometimes have to do an estimate which is not exactly the correct value. Uh, and similar, to get the h parameter, the holding cost, which will depend on the annual interest rate which uh, also might be a parameter which is quite difficult to find the exact correct value for. But even if you have uh, a value which is not exactly the, the, the correct value, but it's uh, within a reasonable deviation from the exact value, then this EOQ formula, as you can see here, it's rather flat at the bottom here. And even if you're finding a Q value, which is not too far away from the actual optimal q value we, you will not have very much increase of the g function or, or the total cost function so in this case if you are choosing a q value here you can see that the cost is actually not very much higher than the optimal cost uh, so even if you are not able to find the exact value of q according to some uncertainty on the parameters in the formula, you will still have a reasonable good solution if you are using a, an approximate q-value which is uh, within a reasonable deviation from the optimal one. And we can also see this. Uh, I will not prove this sensitivity formula, but uh, uh, it's also shown in, in the textbook, but we should be aware of this one. Because here we have the g function, the cost function, with the ordering cost and the holding cost and if the g star is the optimal average annual cost when you are using the optimal q value then it can be shown that this deviation the cost function of using an uh, not optimal q divided by the cost of using an optimal Q, G star, will be one half multiplied by the value of the optimal Q divided by that particular Q value plus the Q value used divided by the optimal Q value. I will show that with a very small example. Let's assume that we have an optimal Q, which is actually not known but uh, this is uh, uh, this is the the q value which we would have found if we had exactly the the correct value of the parameters and if this one was 500 and we are using a q value which is not optimal 550 for example according to some kind of, uh, of uncertainty and inaccuracy of the parameters, then 
we would have a deviation from the optimal value that the g of q divided by the g of the optimal q or also denoted as the g star here the optimal uh, optimal uh, g optimal cost function would be in this case one half multiplied by 500 which is the exact optimal one divided by 550 plus 550 divided by 500 uh, this will give us a result which is 1.0045 this means that the g function would be 0.45% above the optimal g function. The cost by using 550 as the order size will then be 0.45% above the cost of using the optimal order size of 500. So, as we can see here, and as we also saw on the, the previous graph, the deviation, well, here we have another, another numbers, but that doesn't really matter. If you, we can uh, assume that this value was 500, and we used a value of 550 here, the deviation was not very high, and the increase of cost, according to, uh, compared to the optimal cost, was not more than 4%. That's 0.45% above the optimal uh, cost function here. So a moderate deviation from the optimal Q will not lead to a large increase in the cost. And uh, even if we do not know the exact values of all the variables, an, an approximation will usually lead to a good result. If you are not, the deviation are not too high. And we can also see here that to using an uh, larger Q value than the optimal one will also usually be a better strategy than using a smaller one since this curve is uh, not symmetric and the increase here will be much lower than the increase of using a smaller one. Okay, then maybe I should uh, wait with this one we'll come back to later but now we should also include what we call the lead time the time of delivery and uh, so far when we go back to this figure uh, we have assumed that we will place an order at this point where the um, where the inventory level will reach exactly zero and we will have a new delivery immediately. So when we reach zero inventory, the delivery will be there of exactly Q items. But this is uh, in the very special case that we have a lead time, which is zero. Lead time denoted by the Greek letter uh, tau, and it is, in this case, zero. But that's not always the case, or usually not the case. So if not, we need to have a reorder point, a level of the stock, which will tell us when the stock reach that particular level, we should place a new order to get the delivery when we have zero inventory, no items left on stock. And then the reorder point uh, will then be denoted as the capital R, and the reorder point will then be the lead time multiplied by the demand rate. The tau lead time multiplied by the demand rate of lambda. If, uh, and also here we need to make sure that 
we have the same time unit. So if the lead time is given as a fraction of a year, then we can use the uh, demand rate, the annual demand rate. But if the lead time is given in weeks, for example, we need to calculate the demand rate as a demand per week. So make sure that you're using the same time unit here. Uh, and if one example, if the tau is not zero, of course, if the lead time is zero, then the reorder point will be zero. We don't have to order until we get one particular, uh, we, we get exactly to, to zero inventory. But if the lead time in one case will be, for example, four months, which is the same as one third of a year. And if we have an annual demand, which we had in one uh, previous example we have seen, uh, which was 3001, this is of course the lead time, which is four months. Uh, and the demand, if the de annual demand is given to be 3120, was one previous example, then the reorder point will be which is uh, 1040. So when you reach that level of 1,040, you should place an order, and then you will have a lead time, a demand in the lead time when you reach zero, and then you will get this order delivered. A new order should be placed when exactly this reorder point, in this case 1,040, items are left on stock. <coughs> and in this... Uh, yeah, in this uh, previous example, we actually had this situation where the cycle time was more than a year, but th th this doesn't uh, uh, affect uh, the, the reorder point in, in this case, because it will we'll look at the cycle time, and the you will have, you, you will look at the reorder point, and when this number of items are left on stock, you should place the new order and get the delivery when the stock level reaches zero. So, what happens if this tau uh, value, the lead time, exceeds one cycle? What if the lead time is larger than the cycle time? Which means, if you order something at this point, you will have it delivered later than this point. And then we cannot use this strategy uh, directly. So let's look at one uh, another example here, where we actually have found that an optimal queue was found to be 25 items using the EOQ formula. We'll not go through the details here. Let's assume that we have used the EOQ formula, found an optimal Q value of 25 items, uh, and we have a annual demand of 500. We have a lead time of six weeks. First, we need to find the lead time as a fraction of a year. Or otherwise, find the demand in as a demand per week. But let's now just uh, find the, the lead time as a, uh, as a fraction of, uh, uh, yeah, well, we can do that uh, later. We will let, let's first determine the cycle time. And uh, the cycle time is defined to be the order size 
divided by the annual demand or divided by the demand. Dividing by the annual demand, you will have the cycle time as a fraction of a year. In this case, 25 divided by 500, uh, which is 0 0.05 years. And this can also be uh, when multiplying by 52, the number of weeks in one year, we can easily find that this is 2.6 weeks. And now we have the uh, lead time and the cycle time in the same time units, number of weeks. Uh, otherwise, we could calculate the tau value, the lead time, uh, by finding it as a fraction of a year. But what is important, make sure that you're using the same time units. In this case, we are using weeks, otherwise we can use years, months, or days, or whatever. <coughs> so, now we have found the cycle time according to using an order size Q of 25. We can find the ratio and we can now see that the lead time is 6 weeks and the cycle time is 2.6 weeks. That means that the lead time is larger, uh, uh, also quite much larger than the cycle time. So now find the ratio between the lead time and the cycle time. The tau lead time divided by the cycle time t, which is 6 divided by 2.6, uh, which is 2.31, if I remember cor correctly, 2.31. This is now the ratio. And to determine the reorder point, we need to find uh, or to use the fractional part of the ratio. this fraction what th this means the integral part 2 means that we should place an order in this cycle somewhere in this cycle at the calculated reorder point which we will find in a in a short while and then we are placing an order here and then it will take two full cycles until we get the delivery exactly at this point. So the integral part of the ratio will tell us about how many full cycles we need to wait until we get the delivery and the fractional part will decide exactly what is the reorder point, exactly at what level of the stock should we place the order to get it delivered when the inventory reaches zero. So, as the fractional part here is 0 0.31, we have to multiply by t for converting to years, and then 0 0.31 multiplied by t uh, which is 0 0.05 as a fraction of a year, so use this t, not the, the t in weeks. Uh, and this part will be 0 0.31 multiplied by 0 0.05 will be 0 0.0155. 0 0.31 multiplied by the cycle time uh, in years and then to find the exact value of the reorder point then the R reorder point 
should be this value 0 0.0155 multiplied by the annual demand. which in this case will be 7.75, which we can round to be 8. What, uh, which means that when we have 8 items on stock here, we remember that the Q value was 25, and then we have a fixed demand at a fixed rate here, and when we reach 8 on stock, we should place a new order and then we assume that we have done that uh, also in the previous cycle, so we will get delivery at this point and this point. And the order placed when we have eight items left here will then be delivered two full cycles and a fraction of the first cycle later. So then to have this strategy, we need to plan several cycles uh, ahead to get the exact the delivery exactly at the point when we should have it, when the inventory level reaches zero. <coughs> okay, then I will uh, show one example, and uh, this is uh, given in page 216. It is one problem in the textbook. And we can uh, read through the text first to make sure that we know what we exactly should do. Uh, problem 410 in uh, page 216 in the textbook. Uh, a specialty coffee house sells Colombian coffee at a fairly steady rate of 280 pounds annually. The beans are purchased from a local supplier for 2.40 per pound. The coffeehouse estimates that it costs $45 in paperwork and labor to place an order for the coffee, and holding costs are based on a 20% annual interest rate. So this is the information. And then we can try to read the text and find the values of the different parameters we need. So let's first try to find the lambda parameter, the annual demand, which here is given to be 280. Uh, we can also find the cost, the unit cost, the C parameter, which is 2.40. Uh, we want to find the order cost, the K parameter, cost of placing one order. This is given to be 45. And we also the last sentence in the first section here. Uh, holding costs are based on a 20% annual interest rate. That means the annual interest rate or the internal interest rate is 20%. And we know that the holding costs are based on an internal interest rate of 20%, which means that the holding cost, the H parameter, is the interest rate multiplied by the unit value or unit cost. I multiplied by C. 20% multiplied by 2.40. This is what it will cost you to store one item of inventory for one full year. And 20% of 
40 will be 0 0.48. So now we have the different values of the parameters. And let's also read through the different um, sub-questions. On A, determine the optimal order quantity for the Colombian coffee. On B, what is the time between the placement of orders, the cycle time, the T par parameter on, the, uh, on this figure. Uh, on C, what is the average annual cost of holding and set up due to this item. And D, if the replenishment lead time is three weeks, determine the reorder level based on the on-hand inventory. So let's now go through these four sub-questions. First, A, find the optimal order size. Q will be 2K lambda divided by h. This is the EOQ formula, or Q star, the optimal Q, or eventually the QW, Wilson's formula, order size using Wilson's formula. And we have the parameters given here. 2 multiplied by k, 45, multiplied by the lambda, the demand of 280, divided by the h value of 0 0.48 and take the square root of the results, which will give us an optimal order size, an optimal Q of 229. So this will be the order size that will minimize the cost function, minimize the two cost elements here, the order cost and the holding cost in this particular example. Uh, on question B, find the cycle time, the T value, the time between the orders. And uh, to find the cycle time, we can find it in uh, a fraction as a fraction of a year. Then it's the Q value, or this is also the optimal Q value in this case, but uh, anyway, using one particular Q value will give you one particular cycle time, because these parameters are dependent on each other, and divided by the annual demand, the annual demand rate. In this case, 229 divided by 280, which is 0 0.8179. And since we are here using an annual demand, this is also an annual cycle time. And we can multiply by 12 to get a monthly rate, and then get the result of 9.81 months. <coughs> Question C. Find the optimal, or what is the average, annual cost and uh, of holding and setup to this item. We know that the cost function is given as the G, which is the demand divided by the order size multiplied by, no, this is the K of course. Uh, what is uh, special in this field is that uh, there are uh, no uh, standard on the parameters. So here in this course and in this book, we are using the K parameter for the set of cost in other books. And I'm also teaching a master course on this, uh, this topic. And then that book are using actually the A parameter. So here there are no standardized names on the parameters, which might be some confusing, but we are here dealing to the parameter names or the parameter symbols used in the textbook, which are the curriculum in this course. So here, the lambda multiplied by the k divided by the q will be the setup cost, and the holding cost will be the average size of the stock, which is formed by one half q, multiplied by the holding cost, which again is formed by multiplying the 
value of the item or the purchase uh, cost multiplied by the, the interest rate. Uh, here we can also find a new formula which is actually not given in the textbook but it, but it is given in the solution file and uh, I have, have also one uh, uh, well solution files on, on the uh, examples I am uh, showing on uh, in, in the lectures with which I will upload in in fronter and there we are given another formula or a formula for the optimal G value which is said to be the optimal G or the G of the optimal Q which will be the same can be found by just re this of course is a plus like this the setup cost and the holding cost and using the optimal Q value then we can find another formula for the optimal cost or the, the, the minimum cost which is 2k lambda h two times the ordering cost multiplied by the annual demand multiplied by the holding cost. This formula is just by rearranging the cost function here and using the formula for the optimal Q. Uh, before we take the break, we'll uh, also very short show the values of the different uh, cost functions here, because here putting in the parameters, parameter values for the setup cost, we will get 55. Putting in the parameters here, one half multiplied by the Q, 229 multiplied by an H value of 0 0.48 will also give you 55. And a total of 110, which also is the result you get by putting in the parameter values and calculating this uh, expression here. And as we also saw when we showed the figure and, uh, uh, and uh, showed the, the uh, minimum or the optimal point on, on the graph, we saw that the optimal solution is where the setup cost and or the ordering cost and the holding cost are at the exactly the same level. So let's take a 15 minutes break and then I will also show the answer for question D and then we will uh, continue with some other examples on, on this topic. So, short break.